So I wanted to take this from the standpoint of sort of the meter reading system, right? From metering all the way back to billing and look at five ways that we can look at sustainability within that. The first thing, and I, so I've got kind of five tips. And the first tip that I have for the, for the attendees is this. We've got, to, we've got to learn to embrace technology. And sometimes people will say, water utilities are, are slow to change. And, and we know that they are from time to time. But there's a great uh, quote from Stuart Brand who says, once a new technology rolls over you, if you're not part of the steamroller, you're part of the road. Meaning that, you know, we all have to take the opportunity to look at these technologies to see how do they work for my utility, right? What can I get out of it? It's not that I just want the latest and greatest technology just to have it. Can this technology make me more efficient and effective in my operation? And at the end of the day, save me money, right? So that's, that's kind of my first tip. My second tip is avoid insanity. And we do this every day in water utilities. We, we take this, this definition from, from uh, Albert Einstein that says, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I go into utilities that I've worked with for years. And I, and one of the main things that I do is ask them, you know, what's going on? What are your main pro what are your main problems that you're dealing with? And I could talk to a utility one year and I can come back five years later and every year in between, they still got the same problems that they had here. And my thought is, why don't you look at ways to solve those problems? So in, in tip two is why don't you take a look at your business processes and figure out a way to improve those. And the technology lends themselves to improving a lot of those business processes. So like, a, for instance, something that every utility does, probably not now uh, in, in the midst of COVID, we were, we were doing shutoff for non-payment. That's a costly part of the water cycle. Today, there are technologies available to save you the money instead of having to roll all those trucks to do those things, right? And in doing that, I challenge utilities to look at your business processes and cost them out. I ask this question to water utilities all the time. Do you know what it costs you to do this particular operation? How, how much does it cost to shut someone off? Most utilities don't know that. If you don't have a handle on that, you have products and systems in, in place and over the life of the system, you don't really know what it costs you to operate if you don't actually take that time. So there's great products available to avoid going out to shut your, your customers off, right? Saving those truck rolls. That's what I challenge utilities to look at. My third tip, and I don't have a great quote for this, so I made up my own quote for this. At the end of the day, for a utility, you want to get paid for what you made, right? You produce the water. And, uh, and you want to make sure you're getting paid for that. Tip number three is accuracy matters, right? You can't just get the lowest cost meter. If you get the lowest cost meter, it's gonna, it might save you two or three bucks up front. But what are you giving up over time? There are a lot of utilities, and I was on actually doing another webinar this morning, and I had a, a group of about 200 on, and I asked them the question, you know, how many people are using electronic meters? And there was only a, probably about 25% of people that are actually using electronic meters. And this is something that's been in our marketplace for about the last 10 or 12 years. But the advantage that, that most utilities don't really realize is that with an electronic meter, that meter is not going to wear out, right? The meter, the same accuracy that you have day one is going to be there at year 19 and year 20. Because what's, what's happening there, you're measuring via electronics. I challenge utilities to look at these type of technologies, especially electronic metering. And I would start with your largest customers, your largest accounts. Look at your CNI customers that, that you're really hinging the majority of your revenue on and deploy some of these meters. Because think about it, in the case of a mechanical meter, they do fail from time to time. And if you've got one of your larger customers that, let's say, you know, has a bill of 10 or $12,000 per month, if you lose days of revenue from that customer, it's costly. It could cost for the, it could pay for the cost of a new meter in that application. So I do see utilities adapting to uh, some of these technologies to make sure they're getting paid for what they made. The next point I'll make is technologies today can help you cut down on non-revenue water. And this is a factor for every water utility. We all have to report on that. Uh, we all need to monitor it to make sure that we're, we're not losing water in our distribution system. One of the ways that utilities do that is through district metered areas. And a lot of, 
a lot of utilities don't have these in place, but I want to show you if you're not familiar with how to set one up, I want to just kind of go over a quick review of how to do that. Let's say this is your service territory. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hydraulically separate four different areas here. I'm going to put in a couple of boundary valves. I'm going to put it in a master meter to do a comparison. And then I'm going to create four distinct boundaries. So let's say this is one small area of my service territory. And I want to find out if I'm losing water through this distribution system, or I want to find out if I've got inaccuracy of meters. It's easy to do. The way to do that is to install, let's say these boundary valves that I put in, one in the lower left-hand corner and one sort of in the middle. If I do that, I've had, I have a hydraulically separated area here. And if I do a comparison of the water that's going through this master meter and being read by, let's say there's 500 accounts here. And if I do that comparison and there's a million gallons being read on the master meter, and there's only 900,000 gallons being read on the aggregate of counts here, I know I'm losing water one or two ways. Either I have inaccurate meters or I'm losing water through my distribution or a combination thereof. So I could do that through my whole water system by setting up these particular boundaries and then having these areas separated. Now, if I've got an AMI system that's monitoring this stuff continuously, it's going to be able to let me know if I'm losing water. And here's a particular example. If you have that data, the AMI system can track this information for you. You don't need to you know, have someone run out every day to monitor this themselves. The system will track these types of things for you. The dark blue line represents what would be a supply meter, right? Your master meter. And then the light blue line represents what would be your uh, aggregate of homes or aggregate of accounts in that area. In this case, they, it should look like what happened on the first of this month. They should be the same. But over time, what happened is here, you'll see about on the fifth of the month, I've got this disparity between the two, the master meter and the aggregate. That's showing me that I have a problem. What should have happened here at this account, if they wanted to get paid for what they made, they would send someone out to investigate. They let it fester. And what happened here is about the 26th of the month, they had a water main break, right? And who's saying how much water they lost there. But if someone would have been proactive about it, they could have solved that problem up front. My tip number four is data is power. You know, the power of data, having you know, data analytics, it can work for you. Proactive intelligence or proactive analytics can really do a lot to help you find out where you need to concentrate your efforts within your utility. For instance, with a fixed network today, as you, you know, on the, on the top part, this is a traditional fixed network where you've got a high powered endpoint, you've got a data collector that you're responsible for, and then that information is being fed back in the cloud. Well, about six years ago, what made it really easy for utilities is the advent of cellular type technology. It's very easy to deploy. I've got a, an endpoint now that speaks directly to the cellular network. And now as a utility, it's easy for me to deploy and I don't have to worry about managing and maintaining this, this type of equipment. Let it be on someone else to take care of and manage uh, that type, that part of your system. And then my last tip is this, is finding the money to do these projects. You know, don't let that be your excuse. Um, so it's a great quote by James Frisk. And what he said, he says, don't tell me where your priorities are. Show me where you spend your money and I'll tell you what they are. And that's so true because I see utilities putting money into parts of their organization, their operation that at the end of the day, don't really, that's not really their priority. But if you look at your priorities of your largest commercial industrial users, people should be testing their meters every year. They should be replacing when they need to. But I see utilities day in and day out, not take advantage of those or not put those systems in place to make sure they're taking care of what's their real priority. So I won't belabor this screen here, this slide, but it goes right along with what Nambi and Jason talked about is the different ways to fund these projects. And you, you've, I'm sure most of you have heard about the metering as a service, different ways to pay for these systems where you don't have to have all that capital cost up front and you can move it from a CapEx to an OpEx where you're only paying so many dollars per meter per month and being able to get that project going versus waiting years for it to happen. So Sean, with that, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pass it back to you. I just wanted to be able to, to talk about this in relations to the metering and meter reading systems and really show some of the technologies that are available and then really how we can help you be more sustainable. 